um, it, it holds the contractors to a higher standard um, so they do a better job of keeping streets clean and the erosion as I've, I've mentioned before. The other thing that it does is that it, it protects the environment. It keeps a consistent playing field so if if you were to subcontract or to outsource your inspections from another jurisdiction, they'd have the same law. So if you were to use Cleveland's erosion and sediment control um, inspector, which I kind of would recommend, but you know they would come and inspect. Their laws in Cleveland are the same as they would be here because they're mandated by the EPA. And without those laws on the books, it, they can't enforce anything. <laughs> Okay. Are there any other questions in relation to this? Uh, Mayor, you have any questions? No, thank you. Okay. Uh, and you basically said the what's it? Rip Peron? Is that what it's how it's pronounced? Repairing. 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 That really doesn't apply to us because we don't have a, a creek or, or. Well, if you do have creeks, you do. Which you do okay. It does apply. Okay, explain that a little bit more and how that, what the citizens need to know. Okay, the, the word repairing, um, ne never mind, you, you don't need a crap. <laughs> That's a heavy root of me, I'm sorry. Um, it has to do with creeks, lakes, rivers, flowing water that uh, has the potential of wildlife, which we hope they all would. Uh, the setback makes it so that you can't encroach upon that. You, you have to say, stay so far away from the, the creek, stream, lake, river, um, floodplain, or, or wetland. So you stay away from that to protect the, to protect the wetland and, the, and its habitat that it provides for God's creatures. Which plenty of, and plant life, too. You don't want to destroy um, endangered plant life. Okay. Uh, any other questions in, in relation to that, uh, Barbara, Mayor? Any comments, Willa? Mm -hmm. Okay. And the last one is uh, the uh, Stormwater Management Ordinance of the City of Cleveland. This is zero five seventeen. Yep. The Building Code order to comply with the Ohio Environmental Protection Agency requirements for municipal separate stormwater sewer system MS four. Cities in the okay, so can you kind of give the, the, in, in short, the public the uh, in, in short, the stormwater is anytime rain falls on the earth, it has to go someplace, it'll either evaporate or run into a creek, into a river, and then into the lake or ocean. Um, we want to manage that to manage flooding. So, stormwater, if you get a huge rain that happens all the time, the streets will flood up, but after you know, an hour or so, they kind of drain down. If you get too much water that's on a huge impervious area like a parking lot across the street, that water has to go someplace and it's going to get there really quickly because it's paved. Um, so we need to do management that can, and that's where we retain the water on site for a period of time and allowing that water to flow off site at a controlled rate. And usually that's done with containment ponds, underground tanks or something like that. And this law is going to make any new development do such a thing with the water. It allows the sediment to filter out of it. It can also let oils and dirt and gas go out of it before the water goes into the creek. And it's just simple ponds and stuff like that. Now with the Northeast Ohio Sewer District doing their billion dollar development in this area, uh, what is the enforcement mechanism to make sure that the Stormwater is managed and that kind of thing. Well, that, that's a good point. You would need to either have a stormwater inspector, which I would recommend using the Northern East, Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District uh, or Cuyahoga County to do that for you. Um, and they will inspect these jobs to make sure that they are in compliance, that their stormwater management systems, their retention ponds, their um, silt fence so forth is in good shape while they're building and after it's built and it's all working and everything you, you do periodic inspections of it because sometimes these retaining ponds they'll get plastic toys in the outflow structures or trash or something like that and so every now and then you'll have to go by and clean those out so from your experience how often would you suggest 
that these things are inspected in our city? Oh, annually. Annually? Yeah. What about twice a year? Is that going too far? I don't, I don't see that happening twice a year. It's recommended, but people aren't doing it, and they're finding out that if they clean up their systems every year, they're, they're okay. It, Go ahead. Isn't that, isn't that in the um, guideline procedure? Yes, it is. Okay, so those are questions that are in or should be in the guidelines of management and maintaining and all those. Right, they're set forth in the, the Ohio EPA regulations yes, for storm yes, water management. So we have to. Uh, April 1st to act on this legislation. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know about that. Or well, we'll be fined a thousand dollars. Are you aware of that? Yes, I am. Uh, uh, is it a possibility if we, need, if we need to get an extension? You think we can get an extension? I don't know exactly how to answer that question. I mean, I, I don't think I would ask. I think <laughs> I would get the legislation in place because they don't have a good sense of humor, those guys do. Well, we, uh, for the public and Mr. Alderman, we have the legislation in place. We just needed to make sure we discuss it in front of the public and, and committees, and we're having a special meeting tomorrow to, to do it because tomorrow is okay. the, the 30th. So we don't have much left in this month. Okay. So uh, I think you you answered the questions that we have. So okay. we, we we're doing our our due diligence to use Barbara's term to do what we need to do. Exactly right. right. Okay. I'm happy to help. Do you need me here tomorrow? Uh, if if you want to, but I'm going to. Uh, I got the public here, and I need to hear from the police and fire. But are you going to leave? Uh, I want you to see if the questions. Because this is affects members of the, of our city, if they have any questions that I didn't answer, or this or we didn't answer. I'm going to ask them to come up right quick and ask. Um, have any questions in relation to this? Okay, Zaki. Okay, just come up. I just had a quick question about enforcement. Is the city uh, supposed to be out of their budget responsible for the hiring and enforcement of these laws, or do we? Does the city just signal? whoever is supposed to be responsible for monitoring this stuff and then they take it upon themselves to make sure that it's enforced and if it becomes litigation, who's responsible for financing it? Is it on the city to do it or is it on this organization that's forcing us to pass these laws? I'm, I'm not necessarily prepared to answer all of the questions as far as legal goes and litigation. But when a municipality has these laws in place, what they do is when somebody comes to them and says, I'd like to build the structure and they hand you a set of plans, you say, okay, well, here's the building permit fees and we'll need additional deposit on those inspections. So basically your developer's paying for those inspections up until completion until they get off off the bond. Okay. Then, then the inspections throughout the life of the project over the time is more than likely the responsibility of the city to have somebody go around and check these things once a year, which would be a part-time. And then if they're in violation, then the city would litigate it, or? That I can't answer that question. I don't know. You might actually ask your law director. <laughs> and the other question that I had is, is relative